ready here. to go. I know exactly what we got. Dave's going to tell you about it. We're going to have Buddy Landell in here in the opening match today. The Nature Boy will be here facing his opposition. A little bit later on, we've got a great match in which the winner will get a shot at the international title. Talking about Dutch Mantell going against Billy Travis should be a good one. Before that, though, the Fantastics will be here. All right. You can't beat that. By golly, excitement. Plus the fact, Dave, I've got some more information, some interviews about the big Thunderdome series of yeah. bouts that are going to be coming up where we're going to prove who is the toughest guy. And we've got some interesting entrance already into the uh, Thunderdome series. And, uh, hey, I forgot to say, hello again, everybody. This is Lance <laughs> Russell and Dave Brown right along the right side. We're going to be back in action here with Championship Wrestling right after we take time out for this. Okay. Jim Jamison already in the ring. We're waiting for the nature boy, Buddy Landell, to get out here for our opening. And that won't get it. Buddy here. Here. If I'm you would, please. Hey, well, what are you doing? You're certainly not dressed to wrestle. You're in the opening I bout look, here. I look too good, don't I, brother? Have girls, do I look good today or what? All right, calm down. Hey, folks, you got to be a blithering idiot if you think that I'm going to get in the ring with that right there. Buddy, that's, that's what this match is scheduled I don't right care here. this. This nature boy, Buddy Landell time right now. And if you think that I'm going to go out there and put my wrestling boots on and get disgusted because I can't even break a sweat against geeks like this, he I got more locker room time than he's got ring time. Jameson, don't look me right straight in the face, boy, because you ain't got enough time in the ring to even look in my eyes, all right? Now, Lance Russell, I just want to tell you something right now. You know, a lot of people come out and they brag and they boast about their accomplishments and achievements in their career, right? Well, you're looking at the world's heavyweight champion right now. Oh, I hadn't heard. Right? I'm right? fixing to, I'm now, sure. Now, okay, I got proof for Lance Russell. Number one, if the cameraman can get a close-up shot right here, who is that right? Who does the Nature Boy Buddy Landell have in the figure four right there? Is that the world's champion, uh, the world champion, Rick Flair? Rick Flair? Yep. Is he bleeding from head to toe? And the Nature Boy Buddy Landell has him in the figure four, right or wrong? There it is, okay. yeah. Yeah, right. there's no and question you can about that. Screaming. Right, cameraman, back on this, please. If you can notice his mouth wide open, screaming. Huh. And Lance Russell. Here's the coup de gras right there. What is that? That's the Nature Boy Buddy Landell. There he is, Landell the with the what World Heavyweight Champion. I want to hear champion. it out of your own mouth because these people believe you. That is the NWA World Heavyweight Championship belt. Okay, right. So, now you wonder why I, didn't, I don't come out here and wrestle guys like Jim Jameson. Austin Idol and all the rest of these guys. That's exactly why now Lance Russell. I just want to say one thing. I, I don't see the belt around your waist, though, Well, buddy. for political reasons, I had to get, they asked for it back, and being the nice guy that I am, I give it back to him. okay, Lance Russell? Now, enough on that. Girls, I want to talk about the date right now, okay? Now, girls, the cards and letters are coming in by the hundreds and the truckloads. Just keep them coming. And don't forget the pictures, okay? That's all I got to say today. That's all you got to say? The world You're not going to wrestle. Your opponent has already left, and there he goes. Yeah, Eddie. Eddie Marlin. Uh, while you're out here, I want to take the opportunity to tell you that we've got a little piece of film that Jerry Jarrett sent down. Yeah, I knew you brought one and down. And I think everybody would be glad to see it as I was. Oh, okay. okay. Well, are we ready with it? All right, let's, let's take a look at it right now. I want to take this opportunity to um, come to my wrestling fans about a year ago. I came and told you I was looking forward to starting back in the ring and and over the past three or four weeks we've received a lot of letters and cards and people wanting to know where I was and what was happening. Um, it's, it's been a very difficult decision to make but I've made the decision that I will no longer actively participate in professional wrestling as a wrestler. Uh, I make that decision very hard in that the past year there's been a a lot of excitement, a lot of fun. I've enjoyed being around all, all of you. Uh, I've enjoyed being in the ring. But in another way, it's been a very disappointing year um, in that I'm just not able to compete on the main event level like I want to. About three years ago, I got a disease. Uh, uh, the end result of it was that I lost the vision in my left eye. And... Um, and damaged my right eye. I did not consider this a year ago when I told you I was coming back in a handicap because as time goes on you adjust to your situation and while I wasn't able to play tennis with a moving ball I was able to play golf and and as time went on I didn't really consider it a handicap. 
uh, once I got in the ring, uh, the action was fast and furious. And, um, a, com a combination of my sight impairment, along with, I guess, some years, and not really being in the tip-top condition that I was when I used to wrestle uh, actively, a combination of all of those things uh, made me less than a professional wrestler than I wanted to be or was willing to accept. And then the, the real impact of it hit me when, when I realized that it just wasn't fair to my family or to me in my future to take a chance on, on having a thumb stuck in my, in my one good eye or, or a lick on it something that could detach or jar the already damaged retina of my right eye. And I made the decision that I, that I will no longer wrestle actively. I, I will serve as your matchmaker and prom promoter and hope that I can do the very best job I can. I've been around the wrestling business. It's been my life for 20 years, and, and I hope in some capacity I can serve in the wrestling business for the rest of my life. Um, there is one bright spot in my life concerning the wrestling business. My son Jeff has dis determined or decided that at the end of this basketball season, which ends in a couple of weeks, he's going to uh, start the journey to become a professional wrestler. I've told him while he was a good athlete in basketball that a lot of basketball players and football players were, were not able to make the transition to, uh, to pro wrestling, but he's going to give it a try. And, and so... Um, at the end of next week, we start his training as a pro wrestler. Uh, he's already served as a referee, and he will continue to do that while he's training. Uh, I just hope that, that my fans will uh, become his fans, and I'm, I'm looking forward. That's a bright spot in my life. That There's hope that Jeff will carry on the uh, Jarrett tradition. I'm sure that he'll be able to outdo anything that his father did in the wrestling business. But I just want to take this opportunity in closing to thank you for all the good times. And, and uh, without you, these 20 years of, of fun and good life that I've had as a wrestler would not have been possible. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Jerry Jarrett, who uh, owns the uh, Jarrett Promotions. Eddie, what's this going to mean in terms of your uh, situation? Well, now? first, I think the wrestling world is losing one of its all-time greats. But in my situation, it makes me happy. Uh, I've tried, you know, hard to do the best job I had, uh, could do, uh, but I've worked with some guys in the past that didn't, you know, work too well with me. But Jerry and I is real close, and it's going to make my job fun, and I think Jerry and I will be able to improve everything. Well, I'm delighted, Eddie. We uh, know we've always enjoyed working with you and with Jerry, and I'm delighted to have him back in that end of the business, and uh, it's going to be great. Looking forward to a great, great year coming yes, up. Yes, sir, I am too. Okay, thank you, Eddie Marlin. We're going to take time. I'll be back in just a moment. Wednesday, look out, Evansville Coliseum. Can I tell you, we are going to be having every rafter in that place shake it right to the very root of it. And why? Because in the main event, you got Bill Superstar Dundee going against Dirty Dutch Mantell. Right before that, you're going to be looking at a Mid-America title shot. Red Hot Dirty Roads will be after Nature Boy Buddy Landell. And in a moment, I'll give you the rest of the card. Believe me, it's going to be some kind of action. I believe the Dirty One would like a little bit one-on-one -on -one with Bill Dundee. Yeah, I'm sure he would. There's a lot of things he would like. He would like to have a little class like the two guys you're looking at right now. Well, let me tell you, something, Dutchman. I used to put up with all your, what would you say, your red man tune and your Levi Garrett tune, spitting it all over the place. Nature Boy used to make, boy, we're going to get rid of him, man. And I never, now he's okay. You opened up my eyes, Mr. Russell, so we thank you, Jack. You're out, man, tell. But the main reason you're out, because you went around town telling everybody that you used to win everything for Bill Dundee and the Nature Boy. That was lies, Daddy. So we just took you and all your dirty gear and just shot you right out of the family, Jack. We don't want nothing more to do with you, man, tell. No, we lie. We want one more thing. We want to beat your brain 
Washington, and that's exactly what's going to happen to you in Evansville, Daddy. We're going to carry you for the last time, and that's on a stretcher somewhere, and dump you right in the pig slop where you belong, Daddy, like all the rest of the rednecks out there in Evansville. Man, tell you couldn't lick my boots, Daddy. I'm knocking you out, boy. Well, you hear you that know, from Bill Dundee. Earlier, you're the yeah. number one commentator of professional wrestling. You've also got another name now, an instigator, because if you'd have kept your mouth shut, Dutch Mantell would have still had his teeth right now. But no, you had to stir it up. But let me tell you something. In Evansville, uh, D uh, you know, Dirty says that he carried Bill and myself. Well, uh, plain facts speak for itself. Bill has his Southern heavyweight belt. I have my Mid-American belt. And where is Dutch's international belt, huh? He don't have it. That goes to prove that the superstar and the nature boy's been carrying you all along, Dutch Mantell, and I'm going to buy a ringside seat to watch Bill knock your teeth out. J.D. Costello and the Mod Squad. We've heard a little about him over the last couple of weeks. The rich man's poor man is what I've <laughs> got on the keys. Let's take a listen to it. Well, we're probably already a household name up there. J.D. Costello with Spike and Basher. We're the Mod Squad. You know, my mother said I was a black sheep of the family. I guess she was right, because to me, yes means no, no means yes, and all rules were made to be broken. That's why we're in professional wrestling, and that's why we're coming here to rip apart the Fantastics. We hear you have the Southern Tag Team belts. Well, you better hold on to them, because you're not going to have them for long. We've spent a lot of money to check out the Fantastics thoroughly. We've purchased every wrestling video your own. We've bought every scouting report in the nation. We bought every magazine article. We We've read about you. We've seen you. Do you think these two little midgets can beat my men? Those boys? That's what we're talking about. Boys versus men. Spike and Basher can bitch press over 500 pounds, can you? They know how to turn muscle into steel. Tommy Rogers and Bobby Fulton, they're just boys. Every morning they get up, they blow dry their hair. They put on their Reeboks and jog to the health spa. They lift their barbells, try to develop their body. Well, barbells don't hit back, but Spike and Basher do, and they do it for keeps. They get pure pleasure in it. Few things in life make them happy, but tearing apart the Fantastics is going to be the best thing they've ever done. So, Fantastics, we're coming to you. What are they? Just little boys in tuxedos dancing to rock and roll. Well, that's well and good if you want to be dancers, but this isn't Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. This is half man, half machine, and we're going to take you apart piece by piece, and when Spike and Basher leave, they're going to leave a little bit for me. That's right. Mother said the job was going to be easy, but after all, you can't disappoint Mother. It's going to be simple. Be prepared, Fantastics. We're on the way. You may be on top of the mountain for now, but there's one team better than you, the Mod Squad, and we're going to get you. You're number one on our list in the world of dominance of professional wrestling, and you're next. <laughs> Costello and the Mod Squad. I don't mean that music, but I'm talking about fantastic Bobby Fulton and Tommy Rogers. Yowza! We're getting ready to see this group of Southern Tank Team Champions in action right here in just a moment as they'll be going against Jerry Garman, Benny Trailer, and uh, a team of the Fantastics. Take the time to go around the ring and say hi to all the folks that are out here. They really have a tremendous reward with the wrestling fans. And as they uh, quite often do, they give credit to a lot of the uh, enthusiasm they have to the fans. Exactly, and, and rightly so, because when the, with the fans behind them, uh, it gets the adrenaline going, and when you, when you need a little boost, the fans can help you out. And they, the Fantastics, uh, showing their respect and uh, thanks to the fans right now. Okay, we're about ready to go with this uh, next bout, which is going to be a several times, and we're ready for the official introduction. This match is going to be one fall, 15-minute time limit. Introducing both out of Mississippi, 423 pounds total weight, Jerry Garman and Benny Trailer, And going against them at a total weight of 449 pounds from the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California, Bobby Fulton and Tommy Rogers, the Fantastic. 
One ball, 15 minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun is the referee. Walk it oak. In just a moment, the bell will be signed and we'll have it underway. We've got a lot of speed represented in that rank. Fantastics uh, got plenty of that, lots of enthusiasm, and their opponents, Garmin and Trailer, have got good speed too, and uh, solid wrestlers. They haven't hit that top rung yet, but they're battling and trying to make a name right here today. Benny Trailer starting out with Bobby Fulton. Fulton and Rogers, the Fantastics, wearing the Southern Tag Team Championships. This is a non-title match. Hey, round uh -huh. behind, Tommy Rogers. Nice move. Took Benny Trailer down to the mat. Had the shoulders down briefly, but couldn't hold him for the three count. Match just underway. Back on the rope. Tommy presses him down to the mat. Has the shoulders down. Counts. Well, the two count was falling when... Uh, Mr. Trailer was able to break out of it. Hey, following this, Dave, we're going to uh, take a look at some of the Thunderdome interviews that we had with a series of Thunderdome matches that will be starting all over the territory uh, coming up very shortly. Big series coming up. Nice leg drop by Tommy Rogers as he took Benny Trailer down to the mat, working on the left arm, takes him over to the Fantastic Corner, and here's Bobby Fulton coming back in. He started the match. There's a little bit of that fantastic teamwork. Bobby puts Trailer into the rope, ready for a fine drop kick when he came off of there. Trailer near the corner wisely uses the opportunity to tag Jerry Garman. Garman immediately put on the mat. Tommy Rogers presses down on the left arm. Right to work on it as he locks it up. Jerry Garman back on his feet. Tommy Rogers still firmly in control, though. Boy, the way he's got that arm. Is that a Danny, though? Yeah. Jerry's going to have to be careful. Well, now he finally gets out of it. They're back on the ropes. Garman fired Tommy into the ropes across the way. Tommy hung on. Aha! Put the boot on him. And here's Bobby Fulton coming in. Bobby with a toe hold. He puts a twist on Garmin used the fist. Bobby Fulton answered in kind. Fantastic. Make the tag once again. Tommy Rogers up on the middle rope. Oh, he sits down on that left shoulder. Jerry Garmin's got to be seriously considering another line of work about now, I would think. Hey, listen, that hurt me thinking about Tommy hitting the deck from that second ring, uh, the second rope like that. Ooh, back into the ropes and a good right hand fired across the ring. It's Tommy Rogers. Look at that nice reversal, though, and a hip toss. Popped him right over and down. And right away, he's on the arm just as soon as he gets up off the mat. Here comes Fulton. Fulton on the middle rope. He drops down upper arm to upper arm. And Jerry Garman really had that arm worked on. The Fantastics like to do that. Keep their opponent off balance. That's exactly what they've been able to do against Garmin and Trailer ever since this bout started, Dave, because uh, they have not let them get going. There comes Trailer in, and all four going at it right now. Fulton had the abdominal stretch. Trailer jumped in there to break that up, and now everybody going at it. Tommy Rogers has got... Uh, He's got Garmin's shoulders down. Count is two and three. The Fantastics get the win. Three minutes, 31 seconds to time on it, and another victory for Bobby and Tommy. The one, two, three uh, was not that surprising. We expected the Fantastics to win it. I think the fact that they were able to keep Garmin trailer off balance through the entire match was the thing that surprised me the most, as uh, Garmin and trailer can give you a go anytime they get in there. Okay, the winner is the Fantastics. By golly, talking about winners, how about the King? We got some words about Jerry Lawler. Nothing more appropriate than we should take just a moment to talk about an outstanding new video that you may want to add to your collection. This one is called Jerry the King Lawler, Wrestling's Royalty, Volume 1 of the Collector Series. Now, in this uh, tape, you are going to find all of the great highlights of the outstanding life and career of Jerry Lawler. Yes, sir, it's available right now. I'd make it a point. Don't procrastinate. That is, put it off. No, sir, get it right now. You can do it by calling one 800 524 
1-800-524-2507. That phone number again is five is 1-800-524-2507. How much? $29.95 plus $5.95's postage and handling. And actually, that is very, very little for all that you get in the Jerry Lawler collector's item. You'll want to get it and add it to your collection. Once again, the phone number 1-800-524-2507. Way get on the phone right about now, and that'll get you that cassette coming at you before very long. Hey, we talked a couple of times about the Thunderdome series. I can't wait yeah. for those son of guns to get started. It's going to be good. This is kind of the tough man of professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be a series of matches where the guys go in the ring any way they want to get in there, and boy, they get in there and start going at each other and, and carry anything they want to carry. That's right. There, they right? go at it with whatever they want, and the two guys that end up after the series of matches is complete with the best records will meet for a big trophy that's going to be full of money. It's going to be a spectacular series, and we're looking forward to it. Want to get some of the guys' reaction as to what they think about the Thunderdome series. Here they are. Battle of the Thunderdome, man. I don't know if I want to get in this thing or not, you know, because somebody might get me in and try to kill me. So I'm still trying to win my first match. But, hey, what if I did get in here, and what if I won? Now, what would that make me? It would make up for all the losses, right? Just think about that. Yeah, I don't need no introduction. My name's Bill Dundee. And you're right, I'm going to get in this Thunderdome. And you can bring anything you want, Daddy, and I'll tell you what I'm going to bring. The worst match of my life I was in was a coal miner's glove match. And I'm going to have me a coal miner's glove with a big brass knuckle on the end of it. And I'm going to whoop every sucker in there, because I'm one of the toughest dudes around here. You don't believe me, just show up and watch it, Daddy. All right, you're talking about the Thunderdome. The ultimate in professional wrestling. Okay, the biggest thing that I'm going to take out there is my ego, baby. And if i got to slap the figure four on everybody, that's exactly what I'm going to do. You know, this is a match you could get killed in, you could get injured in for the rest of your career. The Nature Boy Buddy Landell is going to be in it full steam, baby, and I'm walking out with the money. Get ready up there. I want to tell you one thing, baby. I'm a Christian man, but when you're surrounded by a bunch of heathens like I am right here, it's hard to think straight. But I want everybody to know, every swing and soul out there to know that when the dirty Dutchman is in something, things happen, and I'm talking about one thing and one thing only, and that's a Thunderdome, baby, because you come as you are and do what you want, and ever since I was yay high to a dog, baby, I've always done what I wanted to do. And we're talking Thunderdome, we're talking one thing, we're talking Dutch Mantel, baby, and I don't care how many I get in, I'm going to win every one of them, and there won't be no opponents left for me to wrestle. And before it all begins, it's going to end because I'm going to take every dadgum last one of the Thunderdome matches. This is Thunderdome 1986. I'll be there. You bring what you can. Come as you are. Be prepared. Tom Branch is on the return, and I'm going to be in Thunderdome 1986. I go win Thunderdome 86. I don't have to bring no weapon with me. I bring my body. I win for, for Libya and Mohammed Gaddafi. Uh, you know, most of the guys, the way it sounds like it is one match. It is a series of matches all over the entire territory. And brother, I'll tell you what, anytime they got a Thunderdome match on the card, you better believe there's going to be lots of excitement. We're getting in some really big guy and tough guys that are uh, going to come in for the Thunderdome matches. One guy that they have already gotten his papers approved, and he is coming in, and he has made it known. Speaking of tough, if I asked both of us which is one of the toughest guys we ever saw, I think both of us would say the big French-Canadian, mm. Joe Ladue. Joe Ladue is set in the ring. Five men on each side, selected from the audience. A total of ten men. The idea here is not to jerk the arms away, but a slow, steady pull to see whether the strength of ten men is enough to pull the giant bear hug of Joe LaDuke apart. LaDuke will attempt to hold it for about 15 to 30 seconds. Everybody is set. Eddie Marlin, promoter Herman Sheffield, they'll be counting one, two, three, go, and then the pull starts. There they go. One side pulling the other. They're pulling back. Look at LaDuke hold on against 10 men with those hands locked firmly in that bear hug grip. Joe LaDuke holding against 10 men. And that's it. He did it. He was able 
to withstand the strength and pull of 10 men. So the victor is going to be Joe LaDuc in the arm pulling contest. I've got a maid. She can clean up. She can come and clean up all this. LaDuc picks him up. You tell everybody how crazy I am. I'm going to show you I'm not that crazy. Look at that! I'm not crazy. Duke, look out! Joe LaDuke is back. <laughs> and I'm not crazy like everybody thinks. Joe Ledoux, and he'll be back in here for the Thunderdome series, and man, that's trouble for a lot of guys. He may bring that big double-edged axe Ooh, in there. Wow, nice. <laughs> we'll take time out. Be back with more excitement coming up in just a moment. You to put down before I forget them, my friend, Monday, March the 10th, Litchfield, Kentucky. That's going to be some good action at Grayson County High School, sponsored by the Football Boosters. And on f Thursday, March the 13th, we're talking about Ramsey, Indiana, North Harrison High School, sponsored by the Band Boosters. Why don't you make it a point to come on out and see that? We'll try to have some names for you here next week. Now, let's look at Wednesday night, Evansville Coliseum. Son of a gun going to rattle those rafters for a fact. Yamamoto against Keith Eric. It'll be Billy Travis and Frank Morrell against Jim. J.D. Costello's Mod Squad, Spike and Basher, you'll see him for the first time. International title shot, tough Pat Rose will be going against Rick Casey for the belt. Abdul Gaddafi and Tony Falk against the uh, Fantastics for the Southern Straps and the Mid-America title on the line when an angry, dirty Rhodes faces nature boy Buddy Lantel. What's the main event? Listen, you're hearing it right. Bill Dundee against Dirty Dutch Mantel. Think there won't be some slugging going on in that one. You've got to be there Wednesday. Everybody knows the kind of uh, grudge there is between Mantell and Rick Casey and when you throw in an international title belt on top of it. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of this action between Mantell and Rick Casey. Standing side headlock, Casey the advantage. second time. Turned the champion over. I mean, and now he's over pounding on the lower back. Drops him over that second rope. Sits down on the spine, pulls up on the chin. Referee counts him off. Call with 50 minutes to wrestle. Mantel. That short clothesline as he slams Casey into it. Dutch going for a suplex, it looks like. Does snap him over and down. This is the Best offensive effort Mantell has put forth in the first 11 minutes with Rick Casey. Drives him with that upper arm. Now Dutch trying to get him mad. Casey's worrying about saving his neck. <laughs> uh oh. Dutch slips a strap around Casey's throat. The referee can't see it. situation like this with Mantell that when he gets the advantage he again is one of those great finishers I'd have my eye right on him he could if he's going to win it this could be it Randy that's right once you get it going Lance he can put you away quick and he's in a position where he's on top right now Lance it's a one two but Casey not to give it up that easy kicks out of it
kick. Dutch is down and missing another one is Casey. The referee had an instinct as he came up. Oh, boy. Powered him down. Dutch is, is down, but so is the referee. He hurt his left arm as he was hammered. Here comes Matt Landell. The referee will turn around. At this point, it's going to be a disqualification. There goes Mantell down. There goes Landell down. He's got Mantell. One, two, three. 1408, the winner and still champ, Rick Casey. We just saw that Rick Casey retained the uh, international heavyweight title match. Now, there was something that happened after that that was really interesting. I want you to pay particular attention to the next bit of tape that we're going to show here because this followed immediately what you just saw with Casey getting his hands raised and getting the belt. This is what happened after it. And if you will, you saw Landell jump in and interfere, but it had no result on the outcome of the match at the uh, particular time. And if you will, well, it did, but I mean, not in the fact there was a disqualification. If you will pay particular attention to Buddy Landell throughout this next little three-minute bit. Let's take a look at it right now. 1408, the winner and still champ, Rick Casey. Now, you remember, if you just joined us and missed it, Landell is the one that caused Dutch to be knocked down and covered by Casey and pinned. He cost Mantell the match, and you're seeing it right now. Let's listen. Now, keep an eye on, on Buddy Landell.
Johnson. That was last week. We got it all resolved. We're going to be over in Jonesboro tonight. The, the nature boy, the superstar, and the Dutchman. We got it all put together, and we're going to be there tonight. Right, brother? Yeah, really Everything's all resolved. Yeah, where's all where's Dutch Mantel? Yeah, where is that? He's probably drunk somewhere. Look, Bill, I've told you all along, I'm tired of carrying the load. You too, man. We've taught that boy everything he knows. He's nothing but a tobacco-spitting redneck. He cramps my style. You know he cramps your style. I'm trying to tell you, open your eyes. We've been working our tails off for and feeding him, too. He's nothing but a free meal. I'm tired of it. I know you're tired of it. Lance Russ, look here. Three-piece, look. Look how we're dressed, right? Now, Dutch is going to go sweat on you. He's probably... He is man. He is... Hey, baby. Come on in, Dutch. I'm sorry I'm late. Bill, I'm okay. Uh, hi, buddy. How you doing? Been, baby? I thought you were going to call me. I did morning. call you. Eight o'clock, I called you. Hey. I called Budro, and we both made it here. Yeah, no, you didn't You didn't call me, but, uh, Bill. Yeah, I did. I sure did. Okay, okay well, I'm in. Hey, well, where's Budro? We called you, baby. We called Budrow you. Budro called you, too, man. Okay, look, I'm on next, right? Yeah, okay, you've got I'm, a match coming up here. Look, I'm going to go and get my stuff Billy on. I'll Brown. be right back, all right? I'm going to go and get dressed. I'll be right back. Yeah. Hey, Dutch. Come here, man. Yeah. But we called you, Dutchman. We love you. Budrow loves you. You love me, Budrow? Yeah, yeah, he loves you. Yeah. I'm real pals. You're my friend, hey, baby. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, buddy. Just let me say something here, Dutch. I hate, I hate to call the gentleman a liar. I believe he's talking out of both sides of his mouth. I would like, hey, it, hey come on now, buddy. I just want him to see something. Is there any way that we can take that last match and roll back about the last 30 seconds of it? No, wait a minute, Judge. I want you to stay here. Just a second. This is not going to take. Can we roll it back and catch part of that? Casey Mantel match, trouble, the end of it. He's trying to Don't, trouble, Dutch. I just want him to see exactly what kind of a friend he's talking about. Dutch, come on now. You know me a long time, and I'm not trying to give you any kind of curve or anything. I he's just want you to look. Trouble, I want you to see something about this guy. Can we get it? Are they working oh, on it right now? This, this, what this we want. Person. You're just trouble. He is a troublemaker. Is it ready? Okay, no, no. All right, now this, remember the little altercation you had with Landev. Don't block the screen. I want him to see the last 30 seconds or so of it. Now keep your eye on Mantell, Dutch. Just leave me alone. Get 
Dutch busted wide open in here. Hit him with that boot, knuckled him. with Landell in this situation. Slam Dutch's head down on the edge of our desk. Takes two of them to do it. Well, there you see it. All we wanted to do was to let everybody know exactly the kind of characters that you're dealing with when you're dealing with Dundee and Landell and all. And at least Mantell, while we've got no love for the, some of the things that Dutch has done recently, he, uh, he deserved to know exactly what was being said and what was done about him in the back end. Boy, he's busted. He hit the edge of this desk here, Ed, and split his head wide open. Yeah, okay, we're going to take time out here, and we'll be back in just a moment. Ooh, very quick again, let me remind you, Monday, March the 10th, Litchfield, Kentucky, at the Grayson County High School. Thursday, March the 13th, Ramsey, Indiana, at the North Harrison High School. All right, Wednesday night, Coliseum, look out. Coming in there is going to be the AWA Southern Tag Champs, Tommy Rogers, Bobby Fulton. They'll be right there with their brand of excitement. You know, I'll tell you, Mr. Russell, we're going to party hardy right there in Evansville. Every time we come there, the girls seem to get prettier and prettier, and the action gets hot and heavy. This time is going to be no different. These titles are going to be on the line. Fucking Gaddafi, watch out, brother, because we're just going to pave our way through you to come to the Mod Squad, who's been knocking us for so long. We're going to keep an eye on you, Mod Squad. Watch out in Evansville. That's right. Evansville is a favorite place for Bobby and myself. Tony Falk, your record speaks for itself. Abdul Gaddafi. You come from living to try to make a name for yourself. Well, not with the Fantastics right there in Evansville. Hand raised high. Woo! Tell me about the Mid-America heavyweight title. Well, I'll tell you something about it. Here's a guy that wants it. Dirty Rhodes going after Landell. I think he says something about that. If oh, he, be quick. He, yeah, real quick. No, and if he wasn't looking, brother, you couldn't see it. Well, I'm going to tell you, Lance Russell, you either got to have good eyesight or long legs and look over me, brother. And right there in Evansville, Bay Landell, you're going to remember Dirty Roads. Mm, you better believe Dirty Roads will be there, and so will Dutch Man Town. I want the people in Evansville to get a good look at me because I'm still walking, talking, and singing, baby. Now, Buddy Landell and Bill Dundee, I don't know what their problem is, but I know what's the problem with Buddy Landell because he started the whole thing. Well, Landell, you ain't going to be the one to finish it because it's going to be me. Now, me and Bill Dundee go back a long, long way. I know how he thinks. I know how he talks. I know what he likes, and I know what he dislikes. But, but, uh, but Dundee, let me tell you, you took the wrong side, baby, but now you're going to have to deal with me. When we climb on that ring in Evansville, I'm coming dead center for you. Not right, not left. Used to be a partner, but no more. Used to help you out, but now i got one mission in mind and that's to hurt you and take you right back down the ladder baby because if you think you can beat me in Evansville Indiana you're backing up I'll see you right there in the ring Jack you hear the Dutchman talking about Wednesday night Evansville Coliseum you be there okay we've got a match scheduled here for our big main event that's going to be an elimination match it'll have Billy Travis in there against Dutch Mantell here comes Billy I'm, I'm really not sure uh, whether Dutch is, what is Landell doing? What are you doing back out here? Wasn't it enough the two of you jumped him out here? Well, Lance, let me tell you something. You know, being the kind-hearted sport and champion that I am, Dutch is uh, kind of incapacitated right now, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. Uh, if you know what I mean. He chose it that way, so he's got to lay in the bed that he, he chose to live in. But let me tell you something, being the champion that I am, I'm going to wrestle him because I'm going to win the international belt, something that Dutch Mantell couldn't do. You saw on the tape the bottom line was he couldn't beat Rick Casey, okay. but I can, okay? Well, Landell takes it upon himself to uh, come out here and make a new match where Buddy Landell steps in. We doubted whether Dutch was going to be able to get in there or not because of the way he was busted open after Dundee and Landell had jumped on him. And so Buddy Landell jumps in there with Billy Travis 
the winner of this uh, bout to get an international heavyweight title match. And Landell may be surprised at this young fellow. This Travis can go. Oh, he sure can. He's got Landell going right now. Head slammed into the turnbuckle. Billy Travis wrestling out of Lexington, Kentucky. Oh, that's going to slow him down right there, though. That big chop by the nature boy, Buddy Landell. Travis. Flip down to the mat. Landell. Where he caught him with the side of the knee right in the top of the head. There's another chop. Travis trying to fight out of the corner. Landell picking him up now. And a body slam. Travis left laying in the middle of the ring, but not for long. Landell picks him up again. This time he drops him over on the ropes. Got him hanging upside down there. You were right. That one first chop, Dave, turned the whole thing around. That could very well have been the turning point of the match. It is so far. Here's Dutch. Dutch Mantell jumps in. That's going to be a disqualification on Billy Travis, I'm afraid. But Mantell oh. got to get a chance to get some of Landell. Here's Dundee. Mantell hit it after Landell. Dundee came in. Look at the Dutchman go. But he's caught between the two of them again. Travis still hanging upside down. Billy in the corner comes after Dundee. And Landell, Dutch rolls out of the ring. <laughs> Dutch Van Pell grabs a chair from ringside. And boy, he chases him out of that ring right now. Dutch in the chair cleaned it out real quick in there. Let me tell you, Travis. Coming to the aid of Dutch Mantell. Dutch calling it back up to the ring right now for a little thank you. Dutch uh, was back there and got, got all fixed up, but his head's bleeding again. I'm going to tell you one thing. That low life sinking doesn't need that land down. I took a lot from him up and down the roads and back and forth. But I'm going to tell you what. I can whoop both of them. By myself, I don't need nobody else to look. They can get you down. Now, Billy, I helped you out, baby, and you helped me out. Okay, All I want you to do is be my partner. I want a match with Landale and Dundee straight up, because I can beat both of them by myself. I just want Bud, Billy here to make sure it's one-on-one. -on -one. I want you to get Eddie Marlin out here. I want you to change. I can't do a thing, no, Dutch. You, you know that. that. Look, will you go you get Eddie? Dutch, you can give me a match. No, I can't do a thing about it. You have to go back and get Eddie. I'd love to see it. I would. I think you deserve it Look after the way they... I know Look it. Look at my face. A big knot Bust back it up here. again. Mm. Wide open. Feel that knot right there, Billy. That's from that belt right on the back of the head, Jack. But I'm going to tell you, you can't change it. Would you go well, get I know Eddie? A guy that yeah, can. yeah. Eddie Marlowe. Go get it. We're going to take time out. We'll be back in just a moment. But all we were trying to do with Dutch was trying to let him know exactly what was going on in there because Landell was doing a lot of this behind the back routine. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, he was seeing things, and then 30 seconds later, he uh, had a whole different story when yeah. Dutch showed up. Mm -hmm. yeah. When he was face-to-face -face with the man. Then he got a little braver when he saw that Dundee was kind of siding mm -hmm. with him, and it was two-on-one. And uh, he hadn't seen the last of Dirty Dutch yet. Uh, I think you're right. Today, the Fantastics won their match over Jerry Garman and Benny Trailer, And then it was Buddy Landell by disqualification defeating Billy Travis due to outside interference. So I suppose that means that Landell does get the international title shot. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he ended up in that situation. Davey, we got to get out of here with Dave Brown. Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.